A few months ago, I started learning how to make generative art using the JavaScript library P5.js, but I decided to see what other tools were out there and I came across Touch Designer. It's a node-based visual programming software and seems to mainly be targeted towards producing real-time visuals for various types of live events. But my main interest is creating still images or just non-real-time videos of generative art that like I'm just going to post to Instagram or whatever, which you can use Touch Designer for too. Now Touch Designer has a good free tier where you get full access to all of its features. The only limitation is that you can't go higher than 1280 by 1280 resolution, which is fine if you're just like I said posting stuff on Instagram or whatever. So there's no real monetary barrier there for getting into Touch Designer, although you'll probably want a GPU in your laptop or computer that isn't completely terrible. Touch Designer has some advantages for producing generative art over regular programming. First of all, you can more quickly try out ideas by connecting together pre-built operators rather than having to write code, although you can still write code if you need to. A lot of these operators work on your GPU, which massively speeds up any operation that's done on a pixel by pixel basis compared to if they were done on the CPU, and you'd normally have to learn how to write shaders to do that, which can be quite a steep learning curve. The other big advantage of Touch Designer is that you can easily view the change that each operator is making so that you can debug more easily and just in general get instant visual feedback about what each thing is doing. And you have all this while retaining a great level of control over different parameters and having options for interactivity including interacting with other software and you can of course do things like bring in an audio file and have that signal affect things. So now I'll briefly go over some things that I've done in Touch Designer. Not intended to be a full tutorial, but to just give you an overview of what I've been able to do so far. Let's start with some noise and make it 1280 by 1280 resolution. We can see it bigger by pressing this little button on the node. I'm going to connect it to a null node and view that one and then do all the other transformations and stuff in between this noise and the null. So right away you can see there are lots of parameters to play with. You can change the type of noise like this. I'm going to stick with simplex noise and change the parameters to something like this. Then I'm going to make the noise transform as time goes on, so I can go into the transform tab and I can make the noise move in either the x, y or z direction. I'm going to choose z, which makes the noise just kind of change as time goes on rather than in the x or y direction. Probably the easiest way to make this parameter continuously change is with a bit of Python, which we can type directly into this box here. We get the number of seconds that have passed using abstime.seconds, and I multiply this by 0.1 to slow the transformation down a bit. Now let's add some colour to this. We can do this by defining a colour gradient in the ramp top. and apply this to the noise using the look up top. Then I'm going to add another operator called displace. This basically uses pixel information from one image to displace the pixels in another. So I'm going to use some more noise to displace this noise to change how it looks. It adds some sort of sharper lines in there, which is what I want. Now I'm going to use a composite node to put this on top of a circle, then add a background colour using the transform top. And I want the noise to kind of conform and warp around the circle, so I'm going to displace the noise again, this time using a blurred circle. I want to mess this up more, so I'm going to use the Luma Blur top, which applies blurring to one image based on another image. So I'm going to use noise here to define the blur. And I'm going to duplicate this whole thing a couple of times and composite them using the screen composite mode to get some more interesting mixes of colours and do just a few other things. 
And there we go, some kind of abstract, blurry planet thing. Now let's look at a different project that uses some different operators. First of all, let's set up some noise like in the previous example. I'm just going to plug noise into noise a couple of times to get these kind of layers of noise. I usually just play around with this. Then I'm going to use an operator called edge, which finds the edge of stuff in the input image. And I want to change the colour of the edge continuously. So what I'm going to do is set up some one pixel by one pixel noise and plug this into a lookup so that I can apply a colour scheme to it. Now I need to convert this using a channel operator so that I can now reference this operator and the data is in the right format to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to set up a feedback loop. So I'm going to get the feedback operator and then add a composite operator. and feed this composited image back. And now you can see we get these layers of lines. I'm going to get a keyboard in channel operator and connect it to the reset pulse button in the feedback operator. So now when I press one on my keyboard, the feedback is reset and it starts from scratch. Then I'll just use the transform top to add a background colour and do a couple of other minor adjustments. And now we have this thing that looks a bit like an abstract painting, I guess. Now, like with most generative art libraries and tools, there is the ability to do stuff with 3D objects and I'm going to just show a fairly simple example of this. So let's start with the grid object. Let's go with about 30 rows and columns. And let's use the transform operator to rotate it. Now to actually render this, we need to plug it into a geometry operator and we need a light and a camera. And then we plug the geometry operator into a render texture operator and I'll add a background colour. So we can give 3D objects materials. So I'm using one called Fong and I'm going to turn on the wireframe option. This material allows you to displace the vertices of the object. To do this, we need to make a couple of things, a normal map and a height map. So let's start with some noise and adjust the parameters a bit. Basically, the white areas are going to displace the grid a lot and the black areas aren't going to displace it at all. I want the displacement to fade out towards the edges, so what I'm going to do is get a square and make it almost as big as the canvas, then blur it. And use a composite operator to put the noise on top of this, and then I'll add a black background. Now to make the normal map, we need to plug this into a normal map operator. And for the height map, I'll just plug it into a null and call that height so that it's clear what I'm doing. Then I go into the Fong settings and add this as the normal map. I then click enable height map and add this. And turn on displace vertices. Oh, and I need to add in this attribute create operator to make the maps work. And I can add in a level top to control the contrast, which in turn controls how much displacement there is. And now I'm going to duplicate this whole grid thing a couple of times, adjusting the placement and noise seeds of both of them. And in case I want to change the number of rows of columns in the grids, I'm going to copy the rows and columns parameters from the first grid and paste the reference in the other grids like so.
So now when I change the parameters of the first grid, it changes all of them. Another thing I've made is this text warping thing. I won't go into details in this video, but it basically consists of some text with the bottom stretched out, then layers of red, green, and blue versions of that text, which are put on top of each other using the screen composite mode, then some displacement with noise, and some blurring to give it an analog feel, which I like. So yeah, that's an overview of Touch Designer and what I've been able to do with it in my first month-ish of using it. I think for generative art in general, regardless of the tools you use, there are two elements which you need to work on to get better at it. And obviously one of those is the technical knowledge of the tool you're using, but the other is your artistic eye, which guides your decisions on composition, colour, texture and style. And I think Touch Designer really facilitates improving your artistic eye because of how fast you can put together ideas and change things around. Like, I've gotten more kind of addicted to using Touch Designer than I did using P5.js because there's just less friction to being able to try different ideas out. If you want to see how I progress with generative art, you can follow me on Instagram as I've just started posting some stuff I make on there. And that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.